Kindly subscribe to support us and inspire us to make new videos. What is a butterfly? Unlike many other insects, butterflies are widely embraced and celebrated for their beauty and charisma. In addition to their cultural significance and aesthetic charm, they make a very valuable contribution to ecosystems worldwide and are important study animals for ecology, evolution, and conservation biology. All butterflies and moths are basically insects. Insects are the most abundant and diverse group of animals, making up over 58% of the world's known biodiversity. They can be found living on land, in the air, and underwater, thriving almost everywhere except for the open ocean. Insects are an important part of our ecosystems, and we still have much to learn about them. Butterflies and moths belong to the insect order Lepidoptera, which is a word that comes from the Greek words for scale and wing. This is because all the patterns and colors on the wings and bodies of butterflies and moths are made up of tiny colored scales. Along with their distinctive coiled proboscis and big showy wings, these features make butterflies and moths different from all other insects. The order Lepidoptera contains an estimated 150,000 described species, and there are an estimated 18,000 described butterfly species found globally. The earliest known butterfly fossils date to the mid-Eocene epoch, between 40 to 50 million years ago. Something like 18,500 named species of butterfly exist in the world, and even more moths, about 140,000. Antarctica is the only continent where butterflies and moths have never been found. The largest butterfly is the Queen Alexandra's birdwing Ornithoptera alexandri with a wingspan of 25 cm, found in Papua New Guinea. In the U.S. there are some 725 species with 525 regular inhabitants. In Europe there are almost 500 species, with 140 of those unique to Europe, while in the UK there are 59 resident species boosted by another half dozen or so that migrate from abroad and breed during the warmer months. There are quite a few butterflies and moths that are spread widely throughout the world. For example, the monarch, Danaeus plexippus, the plain tiger, Danaeus chrysippus, and the distinctly unglamorous small white, Pyrrhus rapi, are found on at least three continents. But it's the painted lady, Vanessa Cardui, that holds the crown of being the more widely seen butterfly throughout the world. You will see painted lady anywhere from Alaska to the Caribbean and Venezuela, although Europe and temperate Asia, from Africa to the Far East. Australia and New Zealand even have their own painted lady, Vanessa Kershawi, which many regard as simply a subspecies of Vanessa Cardui. Where do butterflies live? All butterflies are terrestrial, meaning they live on land. Although most known species are tropical, butterflies can be found living throughout the world from the tropics on the equator to northern regions above the Arctic Circle and from sea level to mountain tops over 6,000 meters tall. Butterflies can be found in nearly all types of habitat, including desert, wetlands, grassland, forest, and alpine. Some butterflies in the family Lycaenidae spend part of their lives underground. Their caterpillars are tended by ants in exchange for providing the ants with sweet honeydew. A butterfly's habitat depends on its species. There are many species, such as the Carner Blue, Lycaeides Melissa Samuelis, left, that have very specific habitat requirements and can't live anywhere else. The Carner Blue butterfly depends on a rare ecosystem called an oak savanna for its habitat, and since most of Ontario's oak savannas were destroyed, this species no longer lives in Ontario and is now locally extinct from Canada. Alternatively, butterflies such as the cabbage white are very adaptable and can be found in many different habitats and on many different continents. Parts of a butterfly All insects, including butterflies, share a common overall body design. A butterfly's body is divided into three main sections, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Each body section has very different functions, and all are needed for the butterfly to live. A butterfly's head is full of extremely important organs that allow the butterfly to sense what is around it and to feed. On the head, you will find the antennae which is attached at the top of the head. Antennae are sensory organs used to pick up chemicals in the air, which may be anything from the smell of flowers to the scent of a potential mate. 
They also help with balance and in detecting motion. Think of them as the butterfly's version of a nose. Compound eyes. Unlike human eyes, which each have one lens, each of a butterfly's compound eyes is made up of many smaller eyes called amatidia, which each have their own lens. The butterfly's brain stitches the information from all of these tiny eyes into a picture of the world around it. Butterflies likely don't see the crisp, clear images that we see as humans, but they make up for it in other ways. Since the amatidia in their compound eyes are all pointed in slightly different directions, butterflies can see forwards, backwards, above and below themselves all at the same time. As well, butterfly eyes can see ultraviolet light, which humans cannot. This comes in handy, since some flowers and even other butterflies have special markings on them that can only be seen in ultraviolet light. To see or be seen. They look a lot like eyes, so don't be fooled by the spots on this giant owl's, Caligo Memnon, wings. Butterflies are nearsighted and so a nice big bed of colorful flowers will attract them into your garden. When it comes to butterfly gardening, plant flowers in blocks and plant for a succession of flowering to keep them happy. Choose their favorite shades of pink, purple, yellow and white and avoid red as they are basically blind to this color and go for single blooms rather than double as not only is the nectar hard to reach in a double flower, but they also have less. Flower size isn't important, many herbs have very small flowers, but are rich in good quality nectar. Butterflies actually have a keener sense of smell than sight and use this to help locate nectar plants. A good strong scent increases the likelihood of a butterfly visiting a flower, thus improving the chance of the flower being successfully pollinated. Once that's happened a flower loses its scent as its job is done, and now the plant concentrates on developing the seed and fruit, which is why regular deadheading is essential for both gardeners and butterflies. Proboscis The proboscis is the butterfly's mouthpart. It is used like a straw to suck up liquids such as flower nectar, water, fruit juices, leaking tree sap, animal sweat, or other things depending on the species. When in use, the proboscis looks like a small wire coming out from under the front of the head. When not in use, it coils up tightly like a spring under the front of the head. Butterflies are only able to sip on liquids with their proboscis and are unable to pierce or break skin. Proboscis coiled and antennae on alert, this torquatus swallowtail, Papapo torquatus, is ready to soak up some sweet nectar. Thorax A butterfly's thorax is a powerhouse that is everything a butterfly needs to move and fly around its environment. On the thorax, you will find their six legs, wings, and abdomen. These are attached to the underside of the thorax. Each segmented leg has five sections, but the three that are easy to see are the femur, tibia, and tarsus. Think of the femur as the thigh, the tibia as the shin, and the tarsus as the foot. A butterfly's legs have the same function as our own, helping them to climb and walk. However, did you know that a butterfly's foot also helps it to taste? Special sensors on each tarsus pick up chemicals from the surfaces they walk on, which helps the butterfly to sense tasty liquids or identify host plants for their caterpillars. This is one reason to avoid picking up butterflies when possible. The creams and chemicals we put on our hands can be hard on their feet. Butterflies taste with their feet. Tiny organs on a butterfly's feet can sense the chemical signature of anything they land on. That's how they know if something is good to eat. Here you can see a slice of orange passes the postman butterly, Heliconius melopamine, taste test. Why do some butterflies look like they only have four legs? Some butterflies, including very common species like the monarch, appear to have only four legs. This is not because they have lost two legs. These butterflies come from the family Nymphalidae, or the brush-footed butterflies. All brush-footed butterflies do have six legs, but the first pair of legs is very reduced and are tucked against the thorax and hidden in the body's fuzz. You will only see these legs if you can carefully pry them away from the body with tweezers. These reduced legs have lost their function in this family of butterflies and are not used for walking. Four wings Although it may appear at first glance that butterflies only have two wings, if you have a closer look it becomes obvious that each side of the body has a forewing and a hindwing. The wings are covered with colored scales, which are basically tiny flattened hairs that give color to the wings. 
Butterfly scales are so small that without a microscope they just look like colored dust, and they are delicate enough that they will brush right off the wing if they are rubbed. Scales are unique to butterflies and moths, and they come in three varieties, pigmented, diffractive, and andraconia. Pigmented scales get their colors from pigment chemicals they contain, which absorb some light and reflect the rest. Over time, pigment scales can fade because eventually the pigment chemicals break down. This is why some butterflies fade when kept in collections that are exposed to light. Diffractive scales get their colors by diffracting light, a similar effect to using a prism to split white light into a rainbow. Diffractive scales give off brilliant metallic and iridescent colors and do not fade over time because they have no pigment chemicals to break down. Andraconia scales are scales that produce pheromones instead of color. Pheromones are chemicals that butterflies release into the air to communicate with other butterflies of the same species and are usually involved in helping butterflies find a mate. A butterfly's wings are used for flight but also have many other functions. Patterns on the wings can help camouflage the butterfly, warn predators that a butterfly is poisonous, surprise or distract predators with flashy displays, and help a butterfly attract and communicate with other butterflies of its species. In the case of poisonous butterflies like the monarch, the wings are also an excellent place for storing toxins, though you would have to eat them to get sick. Butterfly wings reflect light, meaning that they appear to be brilliantly colored. If you look closely, you'll see that they actually have four wings rather than just two, and the wings are covered with tiny three-dimensional scales which reflect the light, causing the jewel-like iridescence. Over time these scales will rub off, which is why older butterflies often look more faded and dull. Beneath the scales is a transparent membrane which sometimes is revealed and is especially visible in the glasswing butterfly, Greta Otto, a native of South America. This iridescence is best shown off by the purple emperor butterfly, Apatura iris, where the deep purple-blue sheen on the wings of the male is only visible from certain angles and under bright lighting conditions. Abdomen A butterfly's abdomen may not look like much on the outside, but inside it holds vital organs that the butterfly needs to survive. Digestive tract Most of a butterfly's digestive tract is housed inside the abdomen. This is where the butterfly processes foods and wastes. Spiracles These are tiny holes found along the sides of the abdomen that let air travel into tracheal tubes in the butterfly's respiratory system, allowing it to breathe. Unlike us, a butterfly's mouthparts are not involved in breathing. Although spiracles may also found on other parts of the body, most of them are located on the abdomen. Reproductive organs All of the important male and female organs involved in reproduction are found in the abdomen, located towards the tip. The abdomen is also where the eggs develop and remain until a female butterfly lays them. It is worthwhile to note that there is no such thing as a stinging butterfly. Butterflies have no stinging organs or venom in their abdomens or anywhere else in their bodies. So don't worry about having a butterfly land on you, they are completely harmless, and you should consider yourself lucky. How can you tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth? One of the easiest ways to tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth is to look at the antennae. A butterfly's antennae are club-shaped with a long shaft and a bulb at the end. A moth's antennae are feathery or saw-edged. Here are some other ways that help to identify butterflies and moths. Wings. Butterflies tend to fold their wings vertically up over their backs. Moths tend to hold their wings in a tent-like fashion that hides the abdomen. Butterflies are typically larger and have more colorful patterns on their wings. Moths are typically smaller with drab-colored wings. Anatomy. Moths have a frenulum, which is a wing-coupling device. Butterflies do not have frenulums. Frenulums join the forewing to the hind wing, so the wings can work in unison during flight. Behavior Butterflies are primary diurnal, flying in the daytime. Moths are generally nocturnal, flying at night. However, there are moths that are diurnal, such as the buck moth, and there are butterflies that are crepuscular, that is, flying at dawn and dusk. Cocoon slash chrysalis Cocoons and chrysalides are protective coverings for the pupa. The pupa is the intermediate stage between the larva and adult. A moth makes a cocoon, which is wrapped in a silk covering. 
A butterfly makes a chrysalis, which is hard, smooth, and has no silk covering. As scientists discover and study new species of butterflies and moths, distinctions between the two are becoming blurred. Some moths may fool you into thinking that they are butterflies such as the Urania lilas, a colorful day-flying moth from Peru. The Casneoidea moths, found in the Neotropics, Indonesia, and Australia exhibit many of the characteristics of butterflies such as brightly colored wings, clubbed antenna, and day flying. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to view the next part of this video in the upcoming week.